Hello and welcome to the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'm Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive here at BrightPath. And in episode 252, I want to talk about one area in which you can improve your professional skills today that will have the biggest impact on your success as a resilience leader. That area is cybersecurity. And I want you to think about this from the context of how our field of resilience has evolved over time. When I got into crisis management um, 19 years ago, uh, a little maybe a little more than 19 years ago, but I was just watching the news and the news was talking about how this year is the 19th anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. So I think about 19 years ago, uh, my concern in Hurricane Katrina was making sure that our team was safe and getting our stores, I was working in a retailer at the time, getting our stores back up and running. And my early years in crisis management and later in business continuity were really about dealing with those kind of disruptions, about um, disruptions that were more of a physical nature, of a physical security nature, natural disaster nature that caused these disruptions. But today, the principal thing that I hear from our clients and prospective clients and others in the industry that they're concerned with are cybersecurity issues. And while we're never going to be the cybersecurity people as the resilience leader in an organization, that's why you have an InfoSec team and a chief information security officer, hopefully, in your organization, we do have to really understand how technology works, uh, at least at a strategy and business level, a little bit about the technology. We need to know how our companies are utilizing that technology, how it gets secured, and what a InfoSec incident is really going to look like in your organization. So I want to first talk a little bit about the need to understand technology, um, and that is understanding how your company utilizes technology uh, throughout the organization. And you're capturing some of this, right, in your business impact analysis, in your conversations, I hope, with your teams as you're doing business continuity planning. But you also need to understand how technology is set up and sourced and operated in your organization because this will give you great insight into those technology risks in your organization and it will make you more effective, a more of a participant and a leader in these conversations. If you think about how we use technology today, even those of us that are not technologists, we're not working in IT, we're not in technology companies, still rely heavily on technology. I look at our team here at BrightPath. In the course of a day, I'm using cloud-based systems, Microsoft 365, I'm using Dropbox, I'm using Microsoft Teams, I'm using OneDrive, I'm using Teams or WebEx or Zoom to communicate, uh, I'm using Ecamm Live and Audacity to record the podcast right now, uh, this evening here at my home. Um, all of these things are technology systems that come into play that I have to be able to use to do my job effectively as the CEO here at BrightPath. And the same goes for the rest of our team. Your employees are doing the same thing, even if you're not in a technology company. And even if you're in something that's more traditionally hands-on, like manufacturing or healthcare delivery or law enforcement, for example, all of these are technology-enabled systems, technology-enabled jobs as well. Almost everybody uses technology as a force multiplier. So it's it's clear that that's why these systems are being attacked, they're being ransomware, they're being extorted through these cybersecurity events. But we also, as resilience leaders, need to understand how these systems work. You need to have an understanding as, uh, does your company rely on on-premise data centers? Do you Are you in a cloud-forward, cloud-native environment? using AWS or Google Cloud or Microsoft Azure or something else, or in some cases a private cloud infrastructure, where is all this data and how does that interact? Maybe you have a combination of on-premise systems and cloud-based systems and SaaS systems. All of these factor into your understanding of how technology works. How does your technology team, for example, manage all of this? What's their procurement process look like? What's the role of business continuity and disaster recovery? Uh, in bringing in new technology. Um, what are the backup requirements, for example? What are the controls that are put into place? What does this mean in terms of change control and incident management? These are all things that we should seek to understand uh, and educate ourselves on as resilience professionals. And when it comes to cybersecurity, none of us are looking for all resilience leaders to be cybersecurity experts, 
but you should have a strong understanding of how your company detects cybersecurity events, investigates and triages those, and what are the actions they would take when they detect that there's actually been an issue. And how does that connect to your crisis management process? The best way to be effective in leading that kind of integration is to have a good understanding of how these systems and capabilities work. Not at the technical level. No one's expecting you to be uh, an expert in detecting cybersecurity incidents in your organization. That's why you have an InfoSec team. But we should expect a resilience leader to understand how should a resilience function and the cybersecurity function best integrate in your organization? How do they work together? And can you speak credibly to the same kind of things that are important to them as we would expect them to understand business continuity? Um, I would argue that improving your knowledge in this area uh, will make you a more effective resilience leader and it will put you in front of what your CEO and your boards consider one of the biggest risks in the industries today, and that is cyber extortion and cybersecurity incidents. So how can you go about learning more? Well, we're fortunate that Microsoft and Google and AWS, Amazon Web Services, have a number of free courses that you can go take and learn more about systems, particularly their own cloud-based systems. They give the training away in a lot of these cases because they want you to buy more of their products, right? But um, AWS, for example, has an entire series of courses on how to, how to secure AWS and how to detect and investigate incidents using AWS. They even have a white paper in courses on disaster recovery in AWS that shares their best practices for how systems should be architected and recovered. All of these, I think, are great educational topics for you and your team to learn more about in order to become more effective resilience leaders when it comes to the technology and potential cybersecurity incidents in your organization. Again, I'm not saying you have to become an IT expert or an IT security expert, but if there's low hanging fruit in terms of a topic that I wish more resilience leaders, particularly those that work in business continuity and crisis management, would seek to understand this is that topic. And I think it will help you as your career continues to advance in the years to come. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.